the old school days, you know, that hollow was all this one family, and you know, you see in them old yes, movies, that's yep, that. all live on one. This is it now. Grab a shovel and go to work here. Didn't like it after about 30 minutes of night, so I think I'll study. <laughs> Yeah. You, and you, you told us a story once you went into the mine. Oh, yeah, went all the way down. Yeah. Down in. Give me a shovel. Here, go to work. How old were you thinking when you went in? My first grade room was right there. <laughs> that room right there on the bottom, right where that door is at. Second grade room was right there. That was a little store. We'd sneak out and you got in trouble. Sometimes you couldn't even get us a store there. We'd sneak out and buy gum and twisters. Right. That little stuff. Sabatelli store was right there. It's not the store no more. All there are stores everywhere. People because there's glass factories, people work. Nice to meet you, Jake. Nice Jimbo you. Fisher. Pleasure to meet you. Wow. Been a long time. <laughs> That's me right there. There you go. Yeah. I hadn't seen that in years. Mom packed all that stuff away and I had no idea. <laughs> I played ball. That's all we did. Played them all three, football, basketball, and baseball. That's all I ever wanted to do. My dad was blown up in the mines when I was two in 67. He spent three or four months in the hospital, whatever it was. His leg was burnt and all blown up. His face was black. Yeah. His fingers, what I remember, did you ever see hot dogs that were burnt black yeah. and, and sort of split open? That's what his yeah, fingers looked exactly. like. Yeah. We had, they had to get a straw in because yeah. his lips were like, plastered to his teeth, yeah. and I didn't think he'd ever hear. I didn't think he'd have ears. Right. It was so bad. And the pain is in your head. There's no such thing. There's no, like, ankles, you're hurt. You play when your ankles are swollen, your leg, your foot. If you don't think it hurt, it don't hurt. But at the same time, was the most loving person in the world and never missed anything you ever did, supported you 1,000% in everything you ever did. But if you were wrong, you were wrong. If you were right, then you stand by it till hell freezes over. Yeah. Yeah. And that was her too, but that, that day was, <laughs> she may have been worse. Around here they don't <laughs> criticize him. Well, yeah, you don't, but you hear it, yeah, you don't hear it. No, the only thing, I, I get, you get hear. angry. I got angry at a lot of people this last year, how they portrayed Jimbo. Yeah. They question his integrity. Yeah. They question that. that. That upset me because I don't care what you say. He was taught and he's, where he came from, both sides of the family. We, his dad always told him, you don't lie, you, uh, you don't steal, and you give a man eight, to eight hours work if he's paying you for it. <laughs> Those were when they were just kids. Yeah. And for them to say that he would deliberately lie yeah, and right. that he would scheme to do something, and I had no, the questions they had, I had no doubt if he said that's the way it was, right. it was that way because I knew he wouldn't lie about it. Yeah. But I was also, you can see why I, would, I didn't waver because I was taught never to waver. Yes. yes. And, then, and like, see, that's what my old dad said. When I say, well, he don't like you. Well, I don't give a goddamn. Yeah. That's his business. Because if you're right, you're right. You're wrong, you're wrong. And what they think doesn't matter. Yeah. Because that's what you, that's what you gotta, he always says, what you gotta, you gotta live with yourself. One thing I told him when he first started teaching, or coaching, was that when you get out there, you can bend on little things that don't really matter. But if it comes down to your core beliefs, you take a stand. I don't care if it costs you your job or what. Yeah. You don't cave in. You stand on your own principle, what you believe is true.